I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Hey, Marissa, how are you? Hey, I'm great. How are you? I am terrific. I have been taking advice that we gave each other and our listeners last week on, on building positive thoughts. And I'm mm-hmm. just, I'm on a roll here. You know, people aren't going to be able to keep me. They're going to say, hold on, Dave, what's going on? You're, you're flying at warp speed or whatever. No, I'm just doing very, very well <laughs> because I'm intentional about building positivity into my life. Mm-hmm. Good. Building up you? that inventory of positivity. Yes. I'm working on the inventory of positivity. How about you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. I'm in awe that this is the um, the final episode of our first season. I guess it you is. could call it our first year of doing our podcast. Yes, that's amazing. So, do we have to end the episode today with like a cliffhanger so that people can <laughs> need to listen? We could. Yeah, I just got to figure out how I'm to do that between listen. now and yeah, twenty eight minutes <laughs> over the now. next. Tw- 25 minutes. Yeah. Right. But you Luckily, know, you know, we're coming right back next week or we're not taking a break or anything. So, um, right. You don't the unofficial to end of yeah. the season. <laughs> There's yeah, you no don't break. need to worry about summertime and, and, you know, being off. So no. wondering what's going on, but that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of works in with, um, you know, cliffhangers and wondering what's going to happen with the theme for my daily or my weekly blog post, which was in your daydreams. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought that we would be encouraging people to daydream? We've encouraged some people, we've encouraged people to do a lot of things. So I guess I'm not that surprised, but I'm excited that we're talking about it. Yeah. You know, cause when I, what I wrote in my post was that, that typically I got in trouble for daydreaming a lot in school because I would just do it. I, you know, Mm -hmm. I would be sitting in a class and the next thing I knew I, you know, especially when the weather got warm. And as I wrote about, I'm thinking about the lakes getting warm. I'm thinking about going fishing. Next thing you know, I'm sketching little pictures of my 12 foot fishing boat that had a six horse Evan route on it. And I mean, I was so focused on just boating and fishing and I, but the problem was then you'd sit down for a regents exam. And it's like, I have no idea what this is all about because I was daydreaming. <laughs> doing that. But what I was learning was that um, about half our thoughts that our brain is, is, is thinking are daydreams. And it's not a bad thing. It actually can be a strategic advantage for those of us that are, that are leading people or running organizations you know, we need to have time to just daydream and we should encourage our team to daydream. So the example that Mm -hmm. I gave, and I really, I haven't focused much on this. Um, What focus? There we go, the buzzword. So what got me thinking about this was a book that I'm reading, just about done with, called Focus by Daniel Goleman. And who would have thought that in a book that's supposed to help me focus, he would be encouraging me to daydream? But he is. And what I realized, I remembered a day, uh, it was actually July 1st of last year. It was a Saturday. Uh, it was the first day of my vacation. I had a week. Uh, some friends of ours had allowed us to use their camp on Otisco Lake. And it was the first day of my, of my vacation. And it was, the forecast was rain, so nobody in the family wanted to go out. So I go out there first thing in the morning. Um, and sure enough, it just starts to rain. And the lake was this beautiful dark forest green, perfectly calm. And you literally could see the drops of rainwater hitting, of rain hitting the lake. And the, you know, these perfectly little concentric rings of, of droplets, so to speak. Um, and I just, I remember sensing everything about the place. I, I you know, I, my cup of coffee and, and, and the smells of the, the summer home and, which in reality is probably just a musty smell from a camp that's been closed up, but whatever. It just smelled wonderful. <laughs> and while I was sitting there, while I was working my way, you know, into this beautiful point of just being able to daydream, the entire plan for transformational leadership just flowed into my head. Now, you'll know that, and, and some of our listeners may, but some may not. That was a new course that I offered beginning uh, in January of this year. Um, it was a course that I had been trying to put together for almost seven or eight months. And it just, I couldn't, 
you know, I knew I wanted to do it. I couldn't figure out how to do it. And literally in two hours, the entire program came out on paper, so to speak, because I was allowing myself to just daydream. Mm -hmm. And, and it was, it was such an amazing experience that I, you know, I, I now realize I need to try to recreate so that right. I can have more of those moments. But the reality and, is we don't have them and, because no. we don't give ourselves permission to have them. Right. So, right. And they don't, and they don't all have to be, you know, like perfectly set. I mean, anyone who reads your email or even just listens to what you just described, sounds like the perfect setting and all was calm. And I know you mentioned uh, having your, nice coffee brewing and the aroma of that, but it doesn't even have to be fancy like that. You really, if you just allow yourself that margin and that space, right. The, the creative juices will naturally flow. Exactly. And the reason, the reason Marissa that I used that descriptive an example wasn't that, and I'm glad you brought it up this way. So you, you caught right on. It wasn't that that's what has to happen. My reason for writing it was I was in tune. I was in a total state of mindfulness, awareness. Mm -hmm. of everything yep. was going on around me so that I didn't have this preconceived idea of what should happen. And I think that's the mm -hmm. key. When we get into this zone, if I can call it that, or this, this mind-wandering um, cocoon, maybe that's a, that's a good way to put it, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the author, Daniel Goldman, refers to it as a creative cocoon that we, cre that we build for ourselves. Um, I got to that point where I noticed the color of the water, the droplets hitting it, the smell of the, of the, the cottage, the smell of the coffee. And because I had purged my thoughts of anything else, that's when my mind was able to really wander and begin to recall all the things that I had done up front, which was the hard work of reading books and listening to podcasts, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and beginning to think through what could be transformational leadership. Yep. And this is also something that could be really helpful too after, um, like after attending a conference yes. or um, a training, you know, even if it's just a, a few hours worth of training, like having that, that margin time where, you know, you're not, you're not scheduling, you know, seemingly important things that are going on, but to really kind of like let those ideas marinate and then, and then come out and, and their to their full potential. Because like you said, it's not like the transformational leadership program, just, you know, like you thought of it and then developed it all in that hour. You had done some other things, um, a little more structured leading up to it, you had attempted to schedule some time to really develop the program. And I'm sure all of that, that helped. But when you right. allowed yourself that time and that, that space that wasn't filled with a, an organized activity or an organized plan, that's where it came together. And all of those things that you had done before made the program what it is. Exactly. You know, Louis Pasteur said, chance favors a prepared mind. So my mind was prepared. All of those ideas, all of those concepts, all of the thoughts related to transformational leadership were in my head. I had done my homework. Like I said, I had, I had read the books. I had listened to different podcasts. Um, I had listened to interviews with authors of, of, of some of the books. But when I got, so when I got to that point, I was able to, to think it through. And it's interesting that when they've done brain scans, of a person when a person's brain is when their mind is wandering it actually activates two parts of the brain the medial strip as well as the executive system which is in the prefrontal cortex so your prefrontal cortex is is that executive control portion of your brain it's it's where the logic it's where the facts and the figures are residing and you would think that when we're really really focused on things our brain would be firing all over the place well that's from what I've read, that's not the case. Now, again, I don't, I don't know brain function, okay? I'm just an old factory <laughs> from years back. But what I'm reading here says that when our brains, when we allow our minds to wander, 
our brain is actually firing in multiple areas versus just one, which tells me Mm -hmm. that it's really tapping more and more of its resources. And we're getting that create those creative juices to flow. One of the examples that you, you shared with me in your research um, was of the CEO of Salesforce. Right. And his, and how he was a VP at Oracle. Who, yeah. And he you know, took a month long vacation in Hawaii and came up with the idea for Salesforce while there. Right. Isn't and I that think that, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. You know, I'm sure he was doing well as a VP at Oracle, but he became, you know, a multi, multi multi-millionaire because he took a month's Mm -hmm. vacation. And and so many of so many of the people that that I meet that come to trainings, I had one gentleman from a company uh, a few weeks back. We were talking about vacations, and he said, "I haven't taken a vacation since." No, he says, "I haven't planned a vacation since 2009." Oh my gosh. And, he hasn't ta- and so I said, was that mean you took one in nine? He goes, no. He says, I planned one in 09. I didn't take one in 09. He hadn't taken one until my, if I remember right, like early 2003 or four was the last time this gentleman took a vacation. Well, what you're getting wow. is just a fraction of what his potential is. Mm-hmm. Too often these people think that, well, you know, I'm sorry, but you can't live without me. It's just, uh, you know, you need me. No, I need you to go rest. I need you to go clear your head. I need you to go into a creative cocoon so that you can come back with some truly innovative ideas that can really help us out. Right. And and I'm glad you've transitioned to this because I think it's important that we talk about what leaders can do to to encourage daydreaming, mind wandering, whatever you'd like to call it, um, to foster innovation in the workplace. Yeah. So what, what happens here is um, it, so this flies in the face of management, but it soars right with the greatest principles of leadership. And so, uh, and, and you've heard me say this, so as anybody that's ever been in any one of my sessions, management is transactional. Leadership is transformational. Um, mm-hmm. Leaders need to set up in their organizations opportunities for their teams to dream. Um, I really believe that, you know, leaders need to, number one, insist and require that their team members take their vacation. You Mm -hmm. know, don't let them, the the worst thing in all the world we can do is pay our employees for their vacation. Because that means, and what I mean by that is you don't take it, so I'll just write you a check. No, don't do that. Because I've known, and you know, and to be honest with you, years ago, I would have taken the money rather than the time off because I needed it. But what we really need is to make sure that our employees are scheduling their time off. Um, just happened to me where, where, you know, those of you around work have been saying, Dave, when are you going to schedule your vacation? When are you going to schedule a vacation? I brought it up in a training session a couple weeks back. And that afternoon, one of the attendees of the class sent me an email and it simply said, schedule your vacation now. And I did. <laughs> it didn't take that long. It took me about 10 minutes because I knew dates mm-hmm. that I needed to be out you know, for different things like a wedding and a week. And I planned a week's vacation and I planned to be off between Christmas and New Year's. So, you know, we need to be enforcing that. The other thing is to, um, I really think that we should find ways to encourage our employees to get outside more. Um, yeah. You know, almost if we can find a way to reward them for taking a break outside where they get some, some fresh air of, uh, some of us were over at, at HP Hood, um, a new MACNI member company in Oneida. And what I noticed was they had these tents out in the parking lot with picnic tables. And they're using that for their employees to take breaks and lunches. Mm-hmm. So they're outside. They have the fresh air. Um, you know, I, I think that we should, be, we should be encouraging our employees to read more, to listen to podcasts more almost rewarding them for information that they can bring back to us that's thinking outside the box. Because right. focusing, so I'll, I'll give you another example. I'm, I'm working with one company um, trying to help them change their culture and, and all of the employees feel as though there's a target on their back. And they're so worried, they're so afraid, they think they're gonna get fired. 
and it's whoa, what a you know, as I'm as I'm having meetings with folks, I'm like shocked at the at at the culture that's there. Now those employees aren't thinking about anything but saving their skin. Mm-hmm. They're not innovative, they're stressed out. So they're never allowing their mind to wander. So Marissa, you know, I just gave some examples from somebody that's a baby boomer. Um, what are your thoughts on how <laughs> we encourage people to, to, to take advantage of this creative mindset time? Um, one, I, one thing that jumps out at me, um, and I can't think of the company or companies that do this, but I, I have read about some different places, workplaces where they set aside an hour a week or two hours a week or whatever it may be um, where there's, there's no, you cannot schedule a meeting at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not during the lunch hour. Uh, You cannot be meeting with clients at that time. It is an hour to, to, you know, free your mind and and think creatively and be innovative um, to work on like, or to work on special projects or, um, you know, kind of taking those seemingly maybe harebrained ideas and seeing what what can be made of them. Right. Um, I think that that's a really, really cool approach to to daydreaming and to um, incorporating it into the workplace. Absolutely. Uh, it's not. It's not easy. I mean, it's it's definitely something that will that needs to be embedded in the culture. Um, to to say you know on Thursdays at three o'clock, you know you are to not schedule anything and that's that's hard for us because we live in this world of you know just fit it in I can you know one more thing or get it done Uh, so it's definitely something that would take culture shift but I do not be successful for organizations sure Uh, I think some other opportunities um for like collaborative thinking Mm -hmm. like such as uh retreats or just team building, morale building activities. Very good. Um, th- those could be, could be useful. You know, things like ropes courses where it kind of takes you into a different environment. If you're used to right. sitting at a desk all day or if you're in a factory all day and then you take a group of people who work collaboratively together and you put them in, in a totally different atmosphere Yep. Just a ropes course or in the woods or, um, you know, some kind of serene retreat center or something like that. I think you're bound to get some creative ideas from that as well. Agreed. You know, I have a really good friend of mine, a dear friend of mine that, that worked his way up into the, the top few positions of Mercedes Benz USA. And, um, wow. yeah. And, and, and he, he, he was, extremely accomplished in, in MBUSA. Um, and, and I remember once asking him, I said, so how far did you go like with the company? Cause he, he is one of the, he's one of the most humble men you'd ever want to meet. And he kind of hemmed and hawed. And, and I said, Oh really tell me, he goes, well, if I would have accepted this position, both my wife and I would have had a car and a driver. So wow. that kind of tells <laughs> you how far he would, he would um, go to the West wing of the white house to, um, meet with the EPA commissioner, he and his boss would go, that type of thing. And his boss mm-hmm. was getting ready to, to move on or to re- be recalled back to Stuttgart or something. And, and they, they were going to offer him the position. He kind of saw it and he actually left the company he, he early just so that he could spend time with his, with his family. That's the kind of person he is. But I, he used to repeatedly tell me of things that he would do with his leadership team. Um, he would, if it was winter time and they were going to have some strategic meetings, he would take them up to Lake Placid and they would go snowmobiling during the day. Mm-hmm. And then they would come back and have like a retreat setting, brainstorming, strategic planning kind of thing. Um, one time he took them out, I think he took them out to Arizona or something to a racetrack where they could spend a day with a professional driver, you know, and, and learn to race a car. And then again, come back you know, let's open our minds, let's do some strategic planning. So clearly Mm -hmm. what you're talking about is what he did. And, and he, he rose to this level at Mercedes Benz and he was in his mid forties to late forties when he, when he quit, um, again, just to spend time with his boys before they were all grown up, you know, and left home. 
So clearly mm-hmm. that works, that, that giving, giving the employees the opportunity to free their minds of business so that they can mm-hmm. become strategic and creative. Um, it's interesting that the tug to drift away from focus is as strong as, as focusing on things. Like, so whenever your mind is not focused on a task, it will drift away. That tug is right there, which means it's supposed to be there. It's when we come mm-hmm. up with our, our, our creativity. Um, wh- one of the notes that, that Daniel Goldman put in his book was he said, we need to, to develop a creative or a creativity strategy. And what he says is you immerse yourself in all kinds of input. So if we think about my transformational leadership class, I spent six to eight months gathering as much information as I could, learning as much as I could about what is the difference between management and leadership, you know, and, and, and that's something I study routinely anyways, but I was taking a harder look at that transformational aspect of leadership. And then uh, he says, Goldman says, you have selective attention on the specific challenge. So I started to focus, okay, how can I pull these things together? And, and I was focusing for a while, but not getting very, not getting um, a lot of, of ideas. But then the third piece is open up awareness. And that's what the, what the cottage on the lake did for me. Mm-hmm. Because when I was there and I didn't realize it, so now, my, my, now that I'm kind of processing all of this as the, over the last few weeks, I'm wondering if I can force myself into that level of awareness. That's going to be the key. So maybe that'll be a, you know, a podcast in, the, in a few weeks. Um, cause I'll be taking that same week off in July again. So I'd be interesting to see if I can isolate myself. So clearly I was alone. There wasn't anybody there. There were no distractions, you know, um, no internet, no cable, wasn't using my phone, mm-hmm. just being fully present in the room, but with the plan to see if I could develop it. Cause I, you know, I did have my iPad out and I just, I was sitting down just thinking about transformational leadership, but all these other things became very, I became very aware, very mindful of my surroundings. And that's when the ideas came. So it'll be interesting to see if. Um, yeah. What you come up with this year. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, there was another quote that Daniel Goldman said, just before an insight, the brain typically rests in a relaxed, open focus marked by an alpha rhythm. This signals a state of daydreamy reverie. I love that. Since the brain stores mm-hmm. different kinds of information in wide-reaching circuitry, a freely roaming awareness ups the odds of serendipitous associations and novel combinations. Now, typically that was written by a really, really smart guy. But what he's saying, right. <laughs> just before we get these great ideas, our minds are relaxed. Mm-hmm. And it opens up our focus on to everything else that's going around us. This awareness is heightened about our, our mindfulness, so to speak, our surroundings. And when we get to that point, all the information that we've been listening to and studying can come together. But we have to allow ourselves to get there. And that's one of the keys. You know, we aren't giving ourselves the permission to daydream. And that, I guess that's the key point that I'm trying to bring out in this, that we have to give ourselves the permission to daydream. Mm-hmm. And, and yes, I think, and, and remove that judgment or cynicism yes, that we might right. fall into that place without judgment, without cynicism, you know, without critiquing what we're thinking, just free form, writing it down on a piece of paper type of thing. Um, mm-hmm. One of my mentors that I mentioned frequently, Paul Martinelli, he led us through, uh, he's the president of the John Maxwell team, and he led us, some of us, through an exercise last summer about how he does what he calls like a brain dump, where he has an idea and he just starts writing, and he writes whatever comes into his head. And my guess is, you know, knowing him, um, he lives in Jupiter, Florida, so my guess is he's sitting on a balcony overlooking, you know, the Atlantic and just allowing himself to be fully open to his mind wandering and it just happens Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like it almost ties into last week's there is no thought without consequences right 
So we viewed it last week as a negative, and this week we're viewing it as a positive. Mm-hmm. Uh, but our new uh, outlook. <laughs> yeah, our new out. Yeah, see there. I just I'm telling you, when you've got that mm-hmm. storehouse, that that warehouse full of positivity, you can turn most negatives into positives. Mm-hmm. Like, so just we can share with folks. So one of the things that happened to us when we recorded the podcast the second time, we still had mic errors. Yeah. So what came from that is, well, other than a new mic, we're hoping it was Mike Garrison because that would be easy to fix. Um, but now the, the line that you and I talk to each other on, we're recording that call as a backup. Mm-hmm. So you just look at what happened and say, hey, how can I do this better? What can I do right. that's going to be better than before? That's the same thing. It's just mm-hmm. let your mind go. Mm-hmm. And the other thought that I had, um, Marissa, about this was I started thinking as I was making my notes about, you know, the craftsmen that work with their hands. Um, and I do that from time to time. It's therapy for me. But, you know, when you're working with your hands, whether it's working on my old wooden boat or building a cabinet, a piece of furniture, you're only thinking about what's happening with your hands. And mm-hmm. if you think about it, a lot of these craftsmen are really artisans. And they're creating amazing things because their minds are allowed to just dream. So in your daydreams, what are you going to dream about? (laughs) And I really believe the solutions to the problems that we face, they're in our heads. We just got to get them out. Mm -hmm. How's that? Couldn't agree more. That's great. So what's, what's on tap? for you and your family in this upcoming weekend? Oh, let's see. You've got just some fun things planned, um, meeting up with friends, the Good. dance recital. You know, I'm, I love dance. So I yes. love not only dancing, but I love going to watch as well. Yep. Um, and some yard work. I know I've been saying that a lot lately, but we've been doing a lot of work. Good. Sounds like a How nice about weekend. You? Uh, no, I don't. Yeah. I don't have anything planned. So I'm nice. hoping. That I'm sounds hoping like a nice weekend as well. <laughs> I'm hoping to get my old boat out and see if I can get mm-hmm. her started up and try to get her ready for the water. But we'll see. Great. So next week. And next week will be our what? one year anniversary. So we're going to talk about commitment. Awesome. How's that? And I think we should tip off our listeners. If there is something specific they want us to talk about, or if there's someone they would like me to interview, they need to let us know that soon because we're prepping for your maternity leave. We are, and we're really excited to start um, doing some more interviews and giving it, you know, everyone will have a little break from me for a little while and chat with some other great folks. And we are, I'm already looking forward to when you get back, so... (laughs) <laughs> but, we, but we've got a few weeks before that happens, hopefully. Yeah, so we have, we have, yeah, we do. All right. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was The Next Page. Bye.